There are currently 1,806 domain names registered here in Rwanda under .rw. This is a significant step towards creation and continued development of local businesses and their content base. Richter started because we wanted to have .rw back in Rwanda. So our main focus when it started around 2005 and four and five. The main, uh, the main goal was let's bring .rw back in Rwanda. So over the years it failed, it's, um, and then around 2011, 2012, we registered officially as a non-for-profit organization, and then from there we moved officially to reclaim uh, .rw back in Rwanda. When it was acquired end of 2012, then we looked at other things that we can do in the ecosystem uh, within internet uh, industry, what else we can do. Then the exchange point came in and now we are moving into content. How can we build content uh, and, and facilitate the eclosion of that uh, ecosystem of content development? We have noticed as the internet is growing, you need to be visible online, you need to be present. So with what we do, as Richter, we, we are trying to push the internet community or the whole Rwandan community to, to realize the importance of being online and being present online, not just being online. There are so many people who have websites that they never update. So if you're looking for information, you find the information they have is outdated. So this is something we need to push the country to understand, the citizens of the country to understand that it is very important to have an online presence and also have updated information on their website. Aphrodis Mutangana is a social entrepreneur and the proprietor of mHealth, an African online systematic pharmaceutical directory that provides education and information to its users on important issues pertaining to drugs in Africa, such as dosage, drug and food interaction and side effects. According to Aphrodis, the .rw domain is an assurance of his identity, taking pride that Rwanda could indeed develop global solutions for recurrent health issues. MHealth is an educative and informational platform where uh, you just take your phone and you dial 776 hash and the app asks you to choose the language and after choosing the language the app gives a list of uh, um, option, it gives options. So uh, when I was developing this I faced two challenges. The first one we have in Africa many people who don't know how to read and the second challenge is the business model. We are charging people per SMS. And, but we are now trying to change the business model to B2B so that we can see if the B company can pay for the service and the population get it for free. Every website that, that I have, it's uh, like the MHealth one is .rw. Why? Because I want people to know that there is something that can come from Rwanda. In most cases, when it's an ICT, a related business for the internet and, and in the mandate that we have we normally sponsor them on certain things depending on what they require but mainly this is to to build basically the internet community so we we facilitate people who have who are going to have an impact on the community so it's not just for the any private uh, benefit Rwanda recently approved the national cybersecurity policy aimed at protecting public and private infrastructure from cyber attacks and safeguarding web users' personal information, financial or banking information, and sovereign data. Security is not always attacks. It can be as well availability. Uh, someone can, uh, can do a, a distributed denial of at, uh, uh, attack and then and then your system are crippled and they cannot work anymore. So we make sure that our systems are run uh, perfectly and they are secure and they can't be go down. So we have a set of tools that we've been putting in place and we are continuing to put in place so that the system is reliable and robust. That's one aspect. On the aspect of uh, uh, securing websites, we tend to work on, on aspect of awareness, we make sure that maybe we can bring trainers to come and train and web developers. This is how you secure uh, your system. This is how you secure your server. This is how you secure your application and so on and so forth. But we can only facilitate that aspect. But we don't 
um, we don't go and make it uh, more secure as such because we don't have the expertise, but we do know people who have the expertise. We bring them on board, they train those web developers, and that aspect is covered from our perspective that, that way. Local institutions have been faulted for producing unskilled graduates who make limited impact on the development of the ICT sector. Due to poor skilled workforce and lack of technical know-how in the rapidly changing technological world, employers are left with no choice but to use expatriates from other regions, which increases costs of production and fuels unemployment for the local population. In the near future, we are planning to have uh, a national, uh, I would say, event, which is uh, uh, called Rwanda NOG, uh, Rwanda NOG, Network Operators Group, which is looking at building capacity as far as system administration and routing networking is concerned. So that's how we're addressing the skill uh, challenge Rwanda has. Not only in one event, but continuously. Uh, if we are doing some uh, afternoon talks, discussing about how to, to fix a problem, how to improve your system, how to do this and that, but on a small scale. But on a national scale, we are looking at Rwanda NOG and other trainings uh, uh, <coughs> events that will help people to, to upskill their, 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 upskill their skills. Yeah. A recent report by the World Economic Forum ranked Rwanda first globally in government success in ICT promotion. The index that saw Rwanda score 6.2 out of a possible 7 assesses factors and policies that enable competitiveness. One among many reasons why Rwanda scored higher than most countries is that it is taking a different approach. There is continued support of equality and enrollment of more women in a previously male-dominated sector. Being in a country that puts ICT and, uh, you know, on sport and it is, you know, the, the policies, the infrastructure, everything is put in place just for this then you understand that this is not, you know, a game. <laughs> this is where we want it to be. And, and uh, it's, not, it's not by chance that we were ranked the first. So if you look in this building, we call it the ICT park. If you also go around the country, or if you go in small households where everyone has a small phone, you know, uh, a small smartphone, they're able to connect and you know, WhatsApp, Facebook, everything, and uh, look at the number of uh, TVs, for example, that are coming up. And if you look at the at the, at the applications that are being rolled out, you know, in the in the education sector, if you look at the at the hospitals, like I can give you a number of things, you know, where you have to go and see for yourself that this is not a joke, that you know, things are happening in this country and it's no surprise that we were ranked the first. We picked the, the, the best, the top five, inspiring other girls around the country to, to join the, the technology or ICT or STEM career. The, the ICT chamber of the private sector is playing a very big role because it has a small association that we call Young ICT Entrepreneurs. So the companies are, you know, that have matured from here, from KLAP, are, are embedded in the Young ICT Entrepreneurs you know, Association. And uh, we've now designed a space for them where we support. We're not supporting them in terms of, you know, uh, finance, but uh, we are giving them all the facilities that could help the business kick off. Although remarkable progress has been made, there is still a lot more to be done in terms of countrywide infrastructure development and sensitization of more Rwandans on the role of ICT in development and economic empowerment. The good thing is that it's, it's more supportive with the, the government that we have of Rwanda. But most especially, it's something you really have to first love what you do and be edu educate yourself about it. Because when it comes to innovations or ICT, it's something that changes every single day. So if it's something that changes every single day, you need to research more. And if you have a passion for something, for sure, it's something that 
would not be an ob ob obstacle for you. So as a person who works in ICT, in the beginning it was a bit hard because you, these are new things that are coming and there are new innovations every day. So just imagine yourself every single day learning something new and after another year there's, it's, it has totally changed. So the challenge is, is there but if you have a passion for something I'm, I'm so sure you would really strive. What we should do is you know, encouraging this kind of culture the 50-50 rule should, should uh, you know, whoever is doing, <laughs> whoever is doing that, or whoever has at least 40 or 50 or 30, like they did in the parliament, yeah, they should be awarded. This is in terms of empowering the, uh, the, the, the private sector, but the, the ICT-led private sector. Nairobi, for example, um, Almost now everyone is an entrepreneur, they have their small you know, company doing this, doing that. And they've started invading you know, the, the countries, the neighbors <laughs> as well. And uh, that is the same spirit. You know? We get everyone to start doing something on their own, something that makes them money, but you know, the money that contributes to, to the development in the overall. I think uh, that's the way to go. So the private sector empowerment is the key.